in this video again something about audio uh, pre-amplifiers and especially how you can get a certain sound characteristic, a certain coloring or not in your home brew uh, hi-fi stereo system. And this is the setup. <coughs> I talked again about this uh, in the past about this audio amplifier, audio end amplifier working on approximately 39 volts. Here is one pre-amplifier stage. These two stages here are not used. There's only one pre-amplifier stage here. And here is a filter. And I've made that filter more or less according to the theory that I, uh, I'm going to explain. As far as I can do that, uh, because it's all only based on practice. Radio practice, audio practice, etc. etc. So no formulas any way. At first the schematic. The schematic is here. The idea of the video is developing audio filters and sound characteristics, like I told. And here I have made, say, some pages that I can flip. So here we have the signal line. Here is the audio signal present, 20 hertz up to 20, 20 kilo cycles. Um, and we send in here a complete audio spectrum. And at the end we have no complete audio spectrum because there is a kind of filter effect. First filter effect is when you connect in the signal line a capacitor of 4N7 or 1N5 or 10N. Uh, it's a low cut filter. That also is very important. Uh, depends on the input impedance and the output impedance. When the input impedance is low, say a 1K resistor here in your audio circuit, the filter will have less effect, with one mega ohm it will have more effect. And then I mean the effect of low cut. So bringing down the um, lower frequencies of the audio spectrum. Perhaps interesting to tell when you do these experiments, when you use a one nanofarad 5 capacitor up to a 4700 picofarad capacitor all the low frequencies are lost and when you use a 470 nanofarad to a 1 microfarad capacitor the whole audio spectrum from say 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz can be transported so uh, that's important to know Anyway, this was a low cut filter and here we have a high cut filter. Always interesting and necessary to use here a resistor because say the impedance here is unknown etc uh, etc. Et it means that uh, with such a filter here, here the audio signal comes in and with a Capacitor of 470 picofarad, all frequencies above say 18 kilohertz are uh, damped out, and with a 1 microfarad capacitor, that's an enormous difference in value. You only hear at the output of the filter the low bass frequencies. This is, of course, combination high cut and low cut. Series capacitor here, uh, a capacitor that bridges the audio line. And uh, well, here we have, say, the things that I want to talk about. It's the uh, variable. So you can make the variable effect of such a filter. You can, say, shortcut a capacitor in the, in the audio line. 
both in this way, in the high cut way and in the low cut way. And that means uh, that, the, that the capacitor loses its effect because it is shortcutted by a 100k uh, potentiometer. Well, uh, all these very, very simple filters have one effect and that is the so-called signal loss. And you need a minimum a one transistor amplifier to compensate that signal loss. And I will show a schematic and I will also demonstrate it. Say, here we have kind of ID when you want to combine the high cut and the low cut frequencies of the complete audio spectrum based on what I have told here. Um, 470N is, is able to, to transport the complete audio spectrum. Here is that kind of separation resistor. Here is a capacitor of that can be between uh, 4N7 and 50N. You can shortcut the effect of that capacitor with a 100K resistor. Here we have the same, but now you can shortcut the effect of the bass boost um, capacitor. And this is of course important, there must here be a resistor. Otherwise, when you uh, turn that potentiometer here to the upper position, the whole signal will uh, be uh, dropped down to a zero. So no signal will be present there. That means that you need here a resistor. Anyway, uh, important to tell all the capacitors that I'm using are non-polar. That's very important. There must be no leakage in terms of DC current when you make a filter. Of course, always very important that there is an input coupling capacitor and an output coupling capacitor that also helps to prevent that DC current starts to flow and they can say affect the filter in a very substantial way. Um, I told that you need a one transistor amplifier. There's a universal one transistor amplifier. It works very good. And I've made for demo purposes this filter. And uh, I made it by purpose in the way that I have drawn it. That means that there are 100k potentiometers and I will demonstrate that the value of them is not ideal, uh, etc. So uh, that's important, I think, when you make such a filter. You have to adapt it, do more experiments, etc., etc., to get the proper sound that you like in your living room or on whatever location. This is the earlier filter that I have showed a few days ago. This is the Bass Boost filter that I've showed, and in fact, the circuit here is a demo circuit for Bass Boost, but also I will show that you can um, give, add some high frequencies to that Bass Boost, etc. I've connected my scope, let's listen and see. What will be the effect of turning these three potentiometers of 100k in the circuit? They are here. This one, this one, and this one. Here I've chosen a 4N7 uh, capacitor because Originally my idea was to use 50 nanofarad, it was too high, I couldn't hear any effect of bringing the high frequencies down, pressing them out, etc. Well, let's listen. Uh, 
very dull sound, you can lift that dull sound up by giving the audio amplifier via this potentiometer here a higher level. So, let's listen to that dull sound. Try to change it by, say, turning the potentiometers here. Now it's completely gone, the sound. But let's listen what it what happens when we turn up the amplification. And here again that dull sound. Now I'm going to add some high to hear the bass boost. And now I'm going to add some high. So complete other sound pattern character. Bass boost, more high, less high. Let's go to the maximum high and turn again that potentiometer. And you can surely see here that here there something different happens. Could mean that you need another uh, potential val uh, value here, potentiometer value here. This is, by the way, what I was talking about, that when you turn this, when you make this uh, resistor too high or too low, it has a very substantial effect on the complete sound pattern. It's now 100k and you could surely hear that I could add high. Turn it again. That was more or less all to tell. When you are interested, of course, uh, you must do, can do your own experiments. These are more or less the very, very basic principles of, say, developing a certain sound character of an audio circuit. With the help of only one transistor, this is the transistor that does the job here, the BC547B. Amplification factor approximately 300. Classical uh, grounded emitter stage, input and output capacitors, etc. etc. So, uh, thanks for watching. You hear, say, perhaps strange sounds on the background. Well, that was also what I wanted to demonstrate. When you connect here a capacitor from the output to the input, the whole unit, the whole filter, uh, changes in a certain way its character. You can try, you can use this uh, location or this location and connect via a wire here a capacitor. I do that now with a 10 nanofarad capacitor. I only have two minutes, but anyway, so my camera wants to drop down. This is the 10 nanofarad capacitor. I switch it off now. And you surely don't hear any effect, but uh, I only can say do this experiment yourself. Try, experiment, get to the proper sound of your audio. Amplifier, etc. etc. I only have a few seconds, so I cannot demonstrate that effect, but it is very, very important. And when you do these experiments, you will surely find out how this all works out.